Hey, everybody, and uh, welcome into Locked on Bama. What are we going to talk about today? Well, Alabama's got a couple of legacies that look to be heading somewhere else. The Bama baseball team, man, they're kicking chicken right now. And hopefully uh, this weather will let up enough to let Alabama continue to be on their roll. And it's only 100 days to kick off, y'all, so we're getting excited. All that and more on today's Locked on Bama. Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? I'm all right, I guess. Uh, weird day recruiting-wise. Uh, Tuesday, unbelievable, with Eli Holstein. Not so sure about things today. I guess I'll have a lot to say. It's a good thing we have a podcast. It is. Uh, for those who are watching on YouTube, I just switched our images because I'm used to me being on the left and Jimmy being on the right. And I was able to do it without destroying my computer or and ruining Jimmy's internet somehow. So I was pretty excited. <laughs> I put my arms up in exclamation of my own achievement. Um, want to thank everybody for making us the first place you listen when it comes to podcasts. You guys are the best. I uh, just want to throw this out there that we're approaching 1,200 subscribers now. We want as many as we can get. Y'all just keep them coming. We appreciate you guys so, so much. And uh, thank you again. And want to thank Bet Online for being the sponsor of today's particular podcast. Now, we could talk about baseball first, but we won't because we're not, I'm not, a baseball person. I am. I'll say this though. I watched the Bama Arkansas game yesterday. I was very excited about uh, their getting that win. We'll talk about them in the second segment. What I think we'll talk about first. Uh, first of all, it's 100 days to a kickoff. Uh, that's mm -hmm. awesome, and uh, very excited about that. Now, Elliot Washington had one of the weirdest and most ambiguous decommitments I have ever seen in my life. He did it on Twitter. And um, I, I'm going to pull it up because it's uh, – I, I want to read it for those who haven't seen it. Uh, it is very bizarre. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the way that it reads is just odd. Okay, this is what he says. I am very grateful for the support and love shown so far in my college recruitment. After continuous discussion with my family, I will be visiting more schools to fully evaluate and compare all of my opportunities as a student athlete. <laughs> Boy, it's easy, to read through, it's easy to read through that line. I know. Obviously, there are many aspects, me and my family, no, just me and family, hmm, work on your uh, grammar there. But anyway, uh, it makes it hard when you're reading something and you know the grammar's wrong. Uh, <laughs> it makes it difficult. We'll continue to monitor, uh, making sure it's the best fit on and off the field. To members of the press, I prefer not to do any interviews at this time. I do appreciate all you've done for me so far and look forward to speaking with all of you and later in the process. I look forward to my senior year at Venice High School and trying to repeat as 8A Florida State champs, Elliot Washington II. A couple of things. I always, thought, I always feel like it's so um, pompous of, of these kids. Every time there's a decommitment, and I mean every time, they always say no interviews. I, you know, you, you just come in and drop a bomb and you're like, I'm not talking to anybody about this. I mean, okay. And look, maybe Elliot Washington still ends up in the class. Officially, that's not an official decommitment, but unofficially that sure sounds like a decommitment. I wish him the best. It, um, Elliot Washington to me will be an, an all time Alabama hero for his shot against Arkansas in the 1992 Two. Two. SEC championship, well, SEC semifinals. Tournament. I think it was a semifinal SEC game. Semifinals. Because um, we beat a damn good Arkansas team that day. And so I wish Elliott Washington the second all the best. I'm not cheering against him. I don't care if he ends up at Alabama or ends up anywhere else. More power to him. A lot of people think, think he ends up at Michigan State. Again, more power. I just find it a little weird. I mean, it, this is a, a legacy. And um, – then on top of that, because I'm going to roll this into it so I can give you the rant floor, um, on top of that, Cade Phillips commits to Tennessee today in basketball, son of John David Phillips and son of a former Alabama homecoming queen, right? I believe that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I remember her being a homecoming queen. Uh, Reagan. Uh, Reagan Crow. 
Yeah. Yeah. She's a good basketball player too, obviously. Yeah. So, you know, he commits to Tennessee, but I don't think Alabama was pushing as much there. So not quite as weird. Um, but anyway, just two legacies that it looks like neither has a, has a great chance to be playing for the Crimson Tide. What do you think? I think these are two extremely different situations. Um, one is pretty negative and the other one is sort of too soon to tell, but, uh, they'll, you know, I, I think the smart thing for Alabama to do is consider this a decommitment. He's clearly looking around. So it would be insane for Alabama not to look around. I think, uh, I don't know that he gets the you shop, we shop speech. I think it's just, he just goes back into the pile of uncommitted players and you continue to recruit him, but at the same time, no longer consider him committed. It's the only way to do that. Now, I also think, I mean, his sentence, I'll be visiting more schools to fully evaluate and compare all my opportunities as a student athlete. I mean, I said many times on this show that every any time something happens and it looks a little weird or it looks a little off, that the explanation almost every time will be NIL oriented. And I think here's a kid that committed to Alabama very early. And he's now going on other visits and he's hearing from other coaching staffs and what he's hearing from these other places are NIL deals that interest him. And I just think he's going to go, wait a minute, I'm going to hop back into the uncommitted pile and see what NIL opportunities are out there for me. And uh, that's perfectly fine. Do do that. Uh, but Alabama's got to, you know, uh, sign probably five DBs in this group, uh, including at least two safeties, if not three, because uh, they're going to lose a few. And uh, if he's not one of them, he's not one of them. Uh, this is just what you have to get used to as recruiting fans. I, as much as I say it, I say it all the time, and I need to say it even more because I still see him post, not just on our own board at On3, but posts all over on all the boards and social media. I still think a lot of fans don't get it. They don't get the impact this has. They, they, they think this is just today's story and – and it's not it, it, it's it's a earthquake it's a it's an asteroid the size of of the empire state building hitting a square up uh it doesn't mean we can't compete that's not true it doesn't mean that we're gonna have a shitty recruiting class that's not true but it's all it's a new world and new world new rules new outcomes new a whole lot of what the hell's if you're used to the old system, but this is a new system and we don't even really know what the system is. So hello, this is just the latest in the uh, NIL trials and tribulations. Yeah. And on top of that, I would say the other thing that stands out to me, and again, this isn't the first time uh, a legacy has decided to go somewhere else, but I think the term legacy is going to mean less and less and less and less because first of all, uh, as the generations go forward, people are going to be legacies of like four or five different schools. I mean, as they yep. transfer and bounce around. So you can mm -hmm. say, hey, this guy played at Alabama, but he also played at Arizona and Wichita State and Rutgers. So, I mean, he's a four-time legacy. And and also it's more about what can you do for me financially? And right. again, maybe it's time for that to happen. I'm not here to debate that. I'm just saying that um, – it does, uh, it does, boy, it sort of pops my passion balloon for what a terrible, what a terrible way to say this for college football in a sense. But Jimmy, I need to tell everybody about Bet Online really quickly. Bet Online, they're our partners and they continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores fights, and even next season's NFL and college futures. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs to esports and even more than that. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, that's where the game starts. All right, uh, Jimmy, let's talk a little about baseball here. I, you know more about baseball than I, uh, but I, I got to say, it has been an exciting couple of days for Alabama uh -huh. to – First, get the win over Georgia. Finally, you know, shaking the Georgia bugaboo. It feels like we haven't been able to get that Georgia booger off our fingers here lately. Um, so we're able to, we're able to beat wow. them. And then um, we we go and take care of an Arkansas team that we took two out of three from in the previous series. Alabama has gone from outside looking in to inside looking out. And uh, I feel Maybe. like – well, in, in, the, in the few – 
bracketologies that I've been able to find for baseball, Alabama's in. And I think one of the teams yep. they're going head to head against is Ole Miss, who Alabama swept on the road, and Ole right. Miss is already out of the SEC tournament. That's right. Uh, Alabama, I mean, I'm going to be more comfortable with maybe one more good win, at least one more good. I think one more good in, good win in, two more, and we can stop sweating. But, uh, no, it, it has been fun. Uh, it's going to continue to be fun. Alabama hasn't even pitched its third pitcher. I'm sure Grayson uh, is going to get the, the start here uh, in the next game, and he, he's been a quality starting pitcher most of the year. Um, the thing that stands out to me, Luke, is that for the <coughs> man, look at this coughing on my show. Um, the thing that uh, stands out to me is if you follow the baseball team all year, uh, it, this isn't really surprising. Uh, we Alabama baseball has looked impressive at times throughout the season. It's not like where's this been all year. It's more like where's this been the last three weeks prior to the last week because last week they played really good. It was the three weeks prior to that that things went kind of. Uh, off the cliff um it, it's been a roller coaster of a season uh but but this isn't the first time alabama has looked like an ncaa tournament team they, they they certainly have a solid talent it's not the talent that other teams not even as good of a team as arkansas to be honest but there are dudes there are dudes that starting pitching is good dylan ray out of the bullpen is good and the hitting is the problem on the team but it's not like those guys are incapable. Zane Denton, for instance, was a really good hitter last year, and he's not this year. Uh, I, I, I can't explain, but Drew Williamson is good. He's a good hitter. Hamater can hit the ball. Uh, Dominic Tavez is probably going to be a pretty good pro. Uh, I'm telling you, this, this is an interesting team. They're, they're not terrible, and they never were terrible. They just played terrible at times. Yeah, in fact, they were ranked number 25 not too terribly long ago, or 21, uh, something like that. And then they promptly uh, stunk it up, and, and they've been out of the top 25 ever since. But, look, uh, the way the rain delay is going, who knows what's going to happen with this tournament in Hoover as of right now at 120 on Thursday. Um, we're not even sure how many games are going to get in today. Texas A&M and Florida were supposed to play at 930. It's 130, and they hadn't even started and who knows when they're going to start. So there's no telling what's going to happen here. But I got to say, um, and I just listened to somebody else on Sirius XM during lunch, and they were saying Alabama was one of the uh, main topics of discussion. They said they think Alabama's in now. And, again, just getting in the tournament would be huge for this team. I know they'd be a oh, three absolutely. seed in Louisville or whatever, but uh, so be it. I mean, let's just, let's just go do it. Fresno yeah. State won it as a four seed. Hey, it's the first thing. I mean, the first thing is get in and 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 then see what happens. But you can't win the NCAA tournament without being in it. And being in it doesn't mean we've arrived, but being in it is the point of why you're playing, uh, making yeah. the playoffs. Um, it's making the playoffs, and that's exactly what it is. It's making the playoffs. So, you know, I, I'd still be more comfortable with another win or two. Let's remember this. Just like the NCAA college basketball tournament, you know, if teams that weren't getting in win their conference tournament, now there's fewer at-large spots. So Alabama can also get knocked out by some upsets in these smaller conferences. So, hey, keep keep on – don't worry about that. Keep on winning. There's not a team in this league Alabama can't beat. Tennessee is going to be the favorite to win the national championship. They're awesome. They're one of the best college baseball teams I have ever seen. Alabama beat them on the road. Yeah. Alabama beat them on the road. That's all you need to know. There isn't a team in this tournament Alabama cannot beat, uh, but but what they're accomplishing is is great. And, uh, hey, throw strikes and hit the ball. Let's take a break. When we come back, I want to talk about a five-star quarterback visiting and talk about the excitement we have for 100 days from football. Jimmy, we're 100 days um, away from Alabama kicking off. Uh -huh. And uh, that makes me very, very excited. Uh, that that sort of helps get me through summer. I've said it several times. Summer is my least favorite time of the year. Um, even though I'm headed to the beach for Memorial Weekend, uh, I, I just prefer fall. I just prefer it because of football alone. But right. regardless, uh, very excited. 100 days gives me a countdown. You and I will be doing the roster countdown or, or at least kicking that back off. I mean, we sort of paused it because there's been so much news with Jimbo and Saban and everything else. We'll get back into that countdown of yours. But uh, what's the most exciting thing you're thinking about 
or the, the one thing you're anticipating uh, so much with enthusiasm. God, what am I? Did I just learn English like today? <laughs> um, I was listening, by the way, I was listening to Louis C.K.'s latest uh, comedy album. And um, he, he has this whole thing about um, how this he went to a Japanese restaurant to get sushi. And this lady comes up to him and says, you know, you know, Finnish. And he said, you know, he said it just the way she said it with the accent. And everybody sort of like cringed. And he goes, wait a minute. I'm not going to lie and tell y'all she came up to me and said, are you not finished with your meal, sir? And um, <laughs> he said, no, that's how she said it. And he said, and what I said to her was, that's right, I'm no finish. And he said, because I think it's wrong for me to respond to her in correct English, making her feel like crap. So <laughs> um, anyway, it was, it was a good bit. Anyway, um, yeah, what are, you, what are you looking forward to the most 100 days out? Well, I can think of several things, but, you know, and something's going to occur to me every single day that's a little different. But but today it's those transfers. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited about Jameer Gibbs uh, and Jermaine Burton uh, and Tyler Harrell. Uh, you know, I'd rank him third in terms of who's going to be the most impactful offensive skill player. I'd go Gibbs, then Burton, then then uh, Harrell. Harrell. Uh, and Steen is obviously, I think, going to be the starting left tackle. Uh, that's four. Uh, and, and I'm excited about what they're going to look like and how they could change the offense. Uh, and and I, I've said it all all year that I don't know that our fans are excited enough about Jameer Gibbs and how good he is and, and how weird it's going to look to have an Alvin Kamara type back back there and not the big bruiser. We've had the big bruiser back uh, really as our running back since 2018. That's, you know, four seasons of football where it's really been – a big bruising back like Najee or, or Brian Robinson. And uh, we haven't really had a pass receiving make you miss speed back. And I think it's particularly with Bryce at quarterback, I think it's just going to make the offense even more dangerous. Can't wait to see it. There'll be a lot of big plays. I think Gibbs presence will make it easier for other players to make big plays and uh, not a knock on Mechie at all because Mechie was great. Um, but I think Jermaine Burton is sort of replacing Mech, and I think Burton's going to be a better player, frankly. I, I think Jermaine Burton's a better player than Mechie, and he's replacing Mechie, and, and I think there'll be more big plays. You know, Mech was really good at, hey, it's third and six, throw it to Mechie, and he makes first down. I think Jermaine Burton might be the kind of player, Luke, that's third and six, throw it to Burton, he catches it, makes first down, and then he makes another 25 yards on top of it. I mean, I, I think he's more of a big play guy though he will also be the possession guy. And, of course, Tyler Harrell, uh, he's going to make those Sports Center top ten plays. He'll make some plays like Jamison did last year. I don't think there will be as many. I don't think it will be as regular as consistent. But I do think that there will be a handful of plays this year where Tyler Harrell uh, looks no different than Jamison Williams did a year ago on the big vertical plays. So, I, I, to me, it's just those new guys uh, – makes it exciting for me because the, the, these are just kids we didn't even have on the team at all last year. When you say uh, speed back making plays in the passing game, the first thing that comes to mind is Kenyon Drake against Florida in 2014. But uh, Jimmy, oh, one other thing I want to throw out there to end this particular episode is Julian Sayan, who is a quarterback from California, a five-star. I think he's in the 24 class. He is. He's going to be visiting June 13th. Which is right after, I mean, it's kind of what Alabama's big recruiting weekend is coming up. It's like June 10th and 11th. So he's visiting right. on like a Monday or a Tuesday, which is probably hard. because he's participating in camp, I would assume. Yeah. So anyway, um, I just think it's interesting. Alabama gets a what we yeah. think will end up being a five star commitment, in Eli Holstein. They're still after Arch Manning, and they it, it just never stops. We got another five star looking at from California. Yeah, Alabama's already offered a handful of, of quarterbacks in the 24 class. That's a little bit unusual. Alabama hasn't really done that in the past. It seems that it's not that Alabama hasn't offered quarterbacks more than a year out, but this year it seems they've offered more. But uh, I say for the 24 quarterback, keep your eye on the in-state kid from Mobile, Baker High School, Josh Flowers. Uh, he is going to visit Alabama about the same time as, as Julian. Uh, he is going to participate in Alabama's camp. Uh, I, I think, I just personally believe that uh, once he participates in Alabama's camp this summer, that uh, 
you know, my, my opinion is Flowers will then be the number one QB on our board, and it will be like most of the others don't exist. I mean, I, I, I think the staff is going to be crazy about him. Um, and he's, he's so good to sign the year after a Holstein and two years after a Ty Simpson because unlike those guys a little bit, Josh may take some time. He, he's a little more raw than those guys. He's, there's a little bit more development with him, almost like a Milrow. A little bit more development is needed, but whew, the end result could be something else. A coach uh, that I talked to recently, of course, not from Alabama, but a, a coach in Power 5 that I bumped into recently, uh, he, he compares Flowers to uh, Jamarcus Russell. Well, that would be the good college Jamarcus Russell, Correct. not the uh, well, the first pick of the draft, the first yeah. pick. Of the people, yeah. you know, you know, one thing that's funny to me. I didn't mean to go from this rant about about Jamarcus, but I've always had a thing with Jamarcus because he's local to me, and I discovered him, you know, in the ninth grade. Everybody loves to talk about Jamarcus Russell's a bust, right? He's a bust. He's a bust. He's the worst bust ever. I've heard that all the time. And and hey, it's however you define it, right? But you know one thing I'd say about Jamarcus, he was a five-star quarterback that signed with Nick Saban that went on to become the number one pick in the draft and sign a hundred million dollar contract, 65 million of which was guaranteed. He's a bust. The whole thing was a disaster. He had a disastrous career. Uh, it's just funny how we don't always think in monetary terms or in terms of what he actually accomplished. I know he wasn't a good NFL quarterback, and that's fine if that's going to be the sole measuring stick. But, you know, Jamarcus made over $65 million playing football. It's kind of strange that we consider him the worst bust. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you could call me a lot worse things for a lot less money. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. All right, buddy. That's going to do it for today's episode. Everybody have a great Memorial weekend. Uh, we will be back uh, probably on Monday, but, uh, you know, we may take a Monday off. Who knows? We don't know what we're going to do. Uh, we'll see what happens. So until next time, everybody, roll tide and have a great weekend. Roll tide.